February 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 4 from the New Testament. Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he endured temptations from the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were completed he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up to a high place and showed him in a flash all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, To you I will grant this whole realm and the glory that goes along with it, for it has been relinquished to me, and I can give it to anyone I wish. So then, if you will worship me, all this will be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, You are to worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil brought him to Jerusalem, had him stand on the highest point of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and with their hands they will lift you up so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said you are not to put the Lord your God to the test. So when the devil had completed every temptation, he departed from him until a more opportune time. Then Jesus, in the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and news about him spread throughout the surrounding countryside. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by all. Now Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He enrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and the regaining of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to tell them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled, even as you heard it being read. All were speaking well of him and were amazed at the gracious words coming out of his mouth. They said, Isn't this Joseph's son? Jesus said to them, No doubt you will quote to me that proverb, Physician, heal yourself, and say, What we have heard that you did in Capernaum, do here in your hometown too. And he added, I tell you the truth, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth, I tell you, there are many widows in Israel in Elijah's day, when the sky was shut up three and a half years, and there was a great famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to a woman who was a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, yet none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all the people in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, forced him out of the town, and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so they could throw him down the cliff. But he passed through the crowd and went on his way. So he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath he began to teach the people. They were amazed at his teaching because he spoke with authority. Now in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! Leave us alone, Jesus the Nazarene! Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him. Silence! Come out of him! Then after the demon threw the man down in their midst, he came out of him without hurting him. They were all amazed and began to say to one another, What's happening here? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. So the news about him spread into all the areas of the region. After Jesus left the synagogue, he entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he stood over her, commanded the fever, and it left her. Immediately she got up and began to serve them. As the sun was setting, all those who had any relatives sick with various diseases brought them to Jesus. He placed his hands on every one of them and healed them. Demons also came out of many, crying, You are the Son of God. 
but he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ. The next morning Jesus departed and went to a deserted place. Yet the crowds were seeking him, and they came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. But Jesus said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns too, for that is what I was sent to do. So he continued to preach in the synagogues of Judea. God, the other day I was thinking about what would happen or how would I react if suddenly I didn't have access to your word anymore? If I didn't have a single Bible on my phone, on my computer, and a bunch of, of books <laughs> of the Bible here in my office? If I couldn't listen to other people online or at my church read from your word? What if suddenly every single bit of access to your word was gone? I would say for a lot of Christians, that's, that's a scary thought. Um, many of us have memorized uh, parts of the Bible and, and know those by heart. Uh, some of them we can remember the stories. They're not necessarily memorized. But that, that idea of, of locking your word into our heart just seems to ring more and more true. Uh, it's something we definitely take for granted that availability and access to your word. But I think about it even more today when reading about how the devil tempted your son and how throughout that whole process, a whole conversation, Jesus quoted to him straight out of the Bible, straight out of actually most of them are Deuteronomy. Um, and when the devil tried to use quotes from the Bible, from your word, uh, he misinterpreted them intentionally, I have no doubt. He is definitely the father of lies. And I think about our life and, and how we talk to people. I'm, I'm in a Bible study right now where we aren't allowed to give our opinions of things. That if we are to answer somebody, we can only answer with a, a verse from the Bible. Uh, which is challenging, but it's also really good, I think. <laughs> because I think too often we manipulate, not always intentionally, but we manipulate your word to fit into our life and how we need that to fit. Um, definitely, usually not to the degree that the devil was with, with your son. But even that can get us into a lot of trouble, and I think we need to remember how true, how pure your word is, and it's what we need to constantly go back to. We also have to be really careful of the people in our lives who misuse your word, like we see in this story with the devil. He intentionally misuses your word for his gain, for what he plans to do, which is evil. And I have a lot of people who want to, in my life, who want to use the Bible to condone or to confirm certain things they're doing, uh, but they're taking things out of context. So God, I ask you to help us when reading your word, to really speak to us about what it is that you mean. There is literal translations. There are word-for-word -word translations. There are thought translations. There's all these translations because most of us don't know Hebrew and Greek. <laughs> but it's still your word and it's still you who speaks to us. I really struggle, um, and I'm guilty of it just as much as anybody else. I really struggle when people take verses out of the Bible for situations. And usually they're good, like we'll throw up things on Twitter or or Facebook and there are these little sound bites that sound good from the Bible but we really need to be in your word we really need to understand the context of those specific Bible verses that there's a lot more that you wanted to teach us than just a bunch of sound bites from the Bible you wanted us to get into these stories you wanted us to understand these people and, and how could we not these people are very much like us we've all been tempted by Satan <laughs> have been tempted by Satan. He has shown all of us, all of the kingdoms that he is more than willing to give us here on earth. Um, and they are very tempting. And he definitely owns them. 
and has the full capability of giving them to us, the full authority. But we have to understand more than just sound bites. We have to understand your word and we have to understand the totality of it and what it is you're trying to say to us. Now, I'll be honest, the more that I read your word, I feel like the less I believe I understand. <laughs> so it's a lifelong learning process and I just get more and more excited every time I read something and you show me more. But God, today I pray that you will unveil your word to the people listening today. That what they need to hear out of it is what you show them. That what they need to confront the devil that day or share their testimony with somebody else that day or to accept you uh, and your son. Whatever it is that they need to hear in your word that day. You know, I always say that the Bible is the word of God and once people start reading it, it becomes the living word of God because we start to see how it affects our lives and how it affects then other people in our lives. God, I do thank you for your word. I, I thank you for making it so incredibly available to us. I pray for the people that do not have that availability or who are under threat of death even for having access to your word. You know, something that we so take for granted. And just as I'm, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm looking around my office and and right here alone, I have probably a half a dozen Bibles right here in front of me. And I just think of all the people in the world who don't have access to your word and, and how blessed we are. And how I truly hope that there's not a, a time or a point in the future where that's taken away from us. But if it is, I hope that we have all read your word enough and have kept it in our heart. That it's something that we can still go back to and, and live with and live for for the rest of our lives. I love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.